Hello, in this video uh, we will be discussing loop equations, so we will be solving two examples using loop equations. In this first example here we have uh, a circuit with two loops and we're interested in finding the voltage and uh, the magnitude and polarity of the voltage across the 20 ohm resistor and the 30 ohm resistor. And we're going to be using uh, loop equations to solve this problem. So the first step is to define uh, the loop currents. So we have the 20 and 30 ohm resistor there. So we're going to define, in this case we have two loops. We have to define the loop currents. And we can define them in any direction. In this case I'm going to choose uh, both currents to have the same direction in this case. Uh, clockwise. So we have I1 for loop 1 and I2 for loop 2. Those are the loop currents. Now we're going to write the Kirchhoff voltage law equation for each loop. We start with loop 1. So we have uh, the voltage from the source with 10. Now following the direction of the current we find here a drop across 20. And the drop across 20 is going to be 20 times the current flowing through 20. But 20 now depends on the current through 20 depends on I1 and I2. I1 is flowing downwards, I2 is flowing upwards. So we're going to say the real current flowing through 20 is I1 minus I2. Then we have 5 volt source. And here's a detail that you should know. This 5 volt source has a different polarity with respect to the 10 volt source we had before. So that's why we have to subtract. Here we were from minus to plus in the direction of I1 and then for the 5 volt source we're going from plus to minus so it's a different polarity and then we have the drop across 30 ohms and that is 30 times I1 that's the, the current flowing through the 30 ohm resistor so we can rewrite this equation to have something like this and I'm going to call this equation 1 now we do exactly the same thing with loop 2 so we start here Loop 2, uh, we're going to write the Kirchhoff voltage law equation starting from the source. So we have 10 volts. It's going to be, we have to subtract here the drop across 10 ohm, that is 10 times I2, minus the drop, um, minus the drop across 20. In this case, the current through 20 is going to be I2 minus I1. We assume I2 is bigger because we're working on loop 2. And finally, the drop across 5, that is 5 times I2. So we subtract 5 times I2, and that is it, that summation has to be equal to 0. So we can rewrite, we can rewrite this equation. 10 equals minus 20 I1 plus 35i2 and this is equation 2 so we have equation 1 and equation 2 we have two unknowns i1 and i2 so we just need to solve this two equations to find i1 and i2 so solving 1 and 2 we get i1 is equal to 0.27 amps and i2 is 0.44 amps. Now we're going to use these loop currents to find the real currents in the circuit to find the voltage and the magnitude and polarity of V30 and V20. So let's start with V20. So for V20 we need to know first what's the real current flowing through the 20 ohm resistor. Now the 20 ohm resistor belongs to loop 1 and loop 2 so the current depends on I1 and I2. In this case, it could be I1 minus I2 or I2 minus I1. I2 is bigger than I1, so I'm going to choose to say that I20 is going to be I2 minus I1 so that we get a positive number. And that number is 0.17 amps. So we have 0.17 amps flowing through 20, uh, and, it, and it is going in the direction of I2. So because I2 is the biggest. So here we have I20 flowing upwards in the direction of I2. 
So now we can find the magnitude of the voltage across 20 ohm resistor. And that is going to be 20 times the current. So 20 times 0.17 and that is 3.4 volts. That's the magnitude of the voltage. Now we need to indicate the polarity and to do that we have to draw uh, the positive and minus signs. So we have to choose we have to uh, use the direction of the real current to define which positive, uh, which terminal is positive and which terminal is negative. In this case, it is like that because the current is entering that terminal, is leaving, it's entering the positive terminal, it is leaving the negative terminal. So now for V30, we have I30 is equal to I1 because 30, the 30 ohm resistor only belongs to loop one. So in this case, just I1 is 0.44 amps, so we can find the well, here we have the current is I1 is just going upwards in this in the diagram, and we can find the magnitude of the voltage by multiplying 30 times 0.44, and we get 8.1 volts. Now we indicate the polarity of the voltage here. Every time we have a resistor, the positive terminal is the one where the current is entering the resistor and the negative terminal is the one where the current is uh, leaving the resistor, is, is leaving the resistor. So we have there the positive and negative and those are the magnitudes and there we have the polarities of the voltages. In this second example, we are going to use loop equations again, so now we have three loops and we want to find magnitude and polarity of V30 and V40. So here we have the 40 ohm resistor and the 30 ohm resistor. And we're going to call this node A and we're going to draw our ground this node over there and we want to find the voltage in node A with respect to ground. And we're going to be using uh, loop equations to find to find those values. Okay, so we want to find VA, it's the voltage in that point with respect to ground. Okay. So let's start with uh, uh, finding magnitude and polarity of V30 in between. So we're going to use loop equations here, so we define the loop currents. So I1 there, I2 here, and I3 over there. So we have three loops we're going to write three equations to get these three unknowns. So we start with loop one. So we have basically one source and two resistors in loop one. So we have 20 minus the first drop is 40. The current through 40 is I1 minus I3. Because I1 is flowing in the opposite direction than I3. And then we have the other drop across 30 and the current through 30 is I1 minus I2. Then this has to be equal to zero. That's the Kirchhoff voltage law equation for loop one. We can rewrite this. Like that and we get equation one. Now we have to do exactly the same thing for loop 2. Now loop 2 is very simple because we just have one source and one resistor. So we basically have here uh, 30 volts. And we're going to have a drop. So we have to subtract 30 times the current, in this case I2 minus I1. equal to zero. Okay, so that's equation two. Then we can, uh, we have to work with loop three. Now, loop three we have no sources, so we only have drops. So the summation of all the drops is going to be zero. 
So in loop 3, what we have is a first drop across 2, and that is 2 times i3. And then we have another drop across 3, that's 3 times i3. And finally, uh, the third drop is across 40, and that's going to be 40 times i3 minus i1. And this has to be equal to zero. So the summation of these three three drops has to be zero. That's the third equation. We can rewrite this. Like that. So this is our third equation. So we have equation one, two, and three. We have three unknowns, I1, I2, and I3. So we can we can find those three by solving the three equations. We get I1 is equal to 11.25 11 amps. Then I2 is equal to 12.25 amps. And I3 is equal to 10 amps. So now we're going to use these three loop currents to find the real currents in the circuit so that we can find magnitude and polarity of those two voltages. So let's start with 30. So for V30, we need to know first the real current flowing through the 30 ohm resistor. Now the real current through 30 depends on I2 and I1. So it could be I1 minus I2 or I2 minus I1. In this case, I2 is bigger than I1. So we're going to write I2 minus I1, so we get a positive number. If you do it the other way around, it's okay, you're just going to get a negative number. So in this case, uh, the, the current is 1 amp, and it's flowing in the direction of I2, because I2 is the biggest. So now we can find the voltage, and that is the magnitude is going to be 30 times 1, and we get 30 volts which makes sense basically because we have the source and the resistor they're connected in parallel so the 30 volts from the source are being dropped across the 30 ohm resistor so the current is going upwards so it's entering this terminal this is positive it's leaving the other terminal the other one is negative that's the polarity of the voltage across the 30 ohm resistor so now we need to find V40 Okay. Uh, the current through 40 is going to depend on I1 and I3 so for V40, we have here the current I40. So it's going to be I3 minus I1 or I1 minus I3. In this case, I1 is bigger than I3. So we can write I40 is equal to I1 minus I3. And that is 1.25 amps in the direction of I1 because I1 is the biggest. So the current flowing here is in this direction and this is I40. That's the real current. And now we can find the magnitude of the voltage by multiplying 40 times I40 and that is 50 volts. So we have 50 volts across the 40 ohm resistor and this is the polarity, the current is flowing that way, so it's entering the terminal, that's the positive terminal, it's leaving the other one, so the other one is the negative terminal. That's the convention for resistors. Now we want to find the voltage A with respect to ground. So to do that, uh, we have to choose a path between ground and node A, for example that one. Or we can just go from ground to that node, subtract 30, and then from that, that node to node A, and so we have the drop across 3. Or we can just go from here to there, then to this node, and then finally get A. So we have to choose a path and then add or subtract the corresponding voltages across, along that path. So let's start with this one. Let's say we choose this path. 
So from ground to that node, we have 20 volts. And then from that node to node A, we have the drop across 2. So we can, we can write the value of VA in, in this way. So let's say we have here VA is going to be going from ground to that node. We have the source in between. That's 20 volts. And then from that node to node A, we have the voltage across 2. But we need to know whether we have to add or subtract that voltage. So this is what we do. Here we went from minus to plus, and we said that was positive 20 volts. But we have to define what is the polarity of the volts across the 2 ohm resistor. So that we know whether we have to add or subtract. So we have the current is going in that direction, is entering the terminal and is leaving the other one here. We have the source that was positive because we went from minus to plus. But then the voltage across the 2 ohm resistor has opposite polarity, so that's why we have to subtract. So we have 20 minus the voltage across the 2 ohm resistor, and that is 2 times I3. I3 is 10, so the voltage across the 2 ohm resistor is 20 volts. 20 minus 20, we get 0 volts. Now we can, we can choose a different path and we should get the same result. So let's say we want to find VA, but we're going to follow a different path from ground to node A. So let's choose this one. So let's say we start from ground to that node. So we're going here from, we have 30 volts, but we're going from plus to minus. So I'm going to say that's negative. So we write minus 30. And then we have to go from that node to node A, and we have to decide here where, whether we have to add or subtract the voltage across 3. For that, we need to know the polarity. So we have the current flowing there is I3, is in that direction, is entering that terminal that's positive, is leaving the other one that's negative. So as you can see, the polarity here, we went from plus to minus. We said minus 30. Here we're going from minus to plus. So there are different polarity they have to have different sign. So we have to add the drop across 30. The drop across 3. So we get minus 30 plus the voltage across the 3 ohm resistor is going to be 3 times I3. And that is going to be minus 30 plus 30. We get 0 as well. So it doesn't matter the path we choose, we should get the same number.